Hello Biology 100 students, welcome to your lecture on cellular reproduction. In one of our previous lectures we talked about the characteristics of living things and we said that one of the characteristics was the ability to reproduce. And definitely that is something that happens particularly in higher organisms, we have sexual reproduction where we have an egg uh, and a sperm that's carrying the genetic information from the female and male and then they combine together to make something called a zygote, a single cell, but then somehow that zygote goes from being one cell to a fetus or new baby that's around 10 trillion cells. So the question is, how did we get here? Well, the answer is mitosis. Mitosis is a type of cell division which results in the production of daughter cells that are genetically identical to one another and genetically identical to the parent cell. So this happens all over the body uh, when your intestinal cells are replaced, when your skin cells slough off and are replaced. It's all happening through mitosis. The only time we have something called meiosis happening is in the gonads. And meiosis is different because it results in the production of cells that are genetically distinct from the parent cell and also genetically distinct from one another. Okay, this slide just shows a diagram of a cell's life cycle. And what you can see here is most of it is in orange right here. This orange part of a cell's life cycle is something called interphase. And it's the in-between phase when the cell is not actively dividing. The cell division phase is called mitosis, and what you can see here is it accounts for actually a very small proportion of the cell's life cycle. Uh, over 75% of the cell's life cycle is spent in the in-between phase, and this is kind of like people too. You, you don't go around reproducing all the time. You spend most of your life growing, going to work, and stuff like that, and that's kind of how it works the cell cycle as well. Okay, so the cell cycle, we said before that mitosis was the area where the cell is actively dividing, but everything else is called interphase. So interphase is the majority of what's going on in the cell. It accounts for 75% of the cell's life cycle, and it's divided into three parts, G1, S, and G2. Now G here, think of it standing for growth. We have growth going on during there, whereas S stands for synthesis. This is when we are synthesizing uh, DNA uh, to have two copies of the DNA so that when the cells divide, each cell will have uh, equal copies of that DNA. Okay, so G1 is rapid growth, and we have our centrioles replicating. These centrioles are gonna be important for uh, dividing the chromosomes during mitosis. And during G2, we have uh, preparation for cell division, and we form our microtubule structures. Okay, remember that uh, the genetic information inside of a cell is carried on the DNA molecule. The DNA molecule is a double-stranded molecule. And again, DNA is a nucleic acid consisting of uh, nitrogenous bases, a uh, five-carbon sugar, and also a phosphate group. Okay, now humans have 46 different DNA molecules in their cells, and during cell division, these DNA molecules will associate with proteins to become something called chromosomes. Okay, a chromosome is a rod-shaped structure made up of a single DNA molecule which is wrapped around a protein called a histone. So normally when you look in a cell under the microscope and you don't see those little X-like chromosomes, it's because that DNA is actually unwound as, into something called chromatin. It's only right as we're getting ready to divide the cell that we wind that DNA back around those proteins to make visible chromosomes. Okay, so what we can see here is a chromosome, right? With this X-like structure you've probably seen on TV. And this chromosome has two sides, and these two sides are called sister chromatids. We'll talk about them in just a minute. Now, S phase was very important, right? We had interphase, which included G1, S, and G2. During this S phase, it's the synthesis phase, if I can say that right. So during this phase, we are taking our original DNA molecules and we are copying them into two identical DNA molecules. And this is important because remember what's gonna happen uh, during mitosis, we're gonna take one cell and divide it into two. And so it's really important that both cells have the exact same genetic information so they can carry on and function. Okay, this diagram just shows uh, another picture of how DNA is replicated. During S phase, our original DNA molecules will unwind, and then we have an enzyme in there called DNA polymerase, which goes and synthesizes complementary bases onto each side of the ladder there. So what we get at the end are two identical DNA molecules. And this happens for each of the 46 DNA molecules in the cell. So that if you have one skin cell dividing into two, each of those two skin cells will have the exact same genetic information. Okay, now we need to talk a little bit more about chromosome structure. After the S phase is complete, we're gonna have two halves of a chromosome that are genetically identical. And these two identical halves are called sister chromatids. So this is what was happening during the S phase. Originally, we had 
essentially a chromosome that only had one copy of itself. But during S phase, we produce a second copy. So we have two copies here. And so we have one side, and then we have the other side. It's important to realize that these sides are called sister chromatids. They're joined together by something called a centromere, and that both of these halves, the sister chromatids, are genetically identical to one another. Okay, this slide just shows what the chromosomes look like at the end of S phase. Remember, we have 46 chromosomes, and initially they just had sort of one copy apiece. But after that S phase, they have two identical halves, and these are called sister chromatids. Now, the human chromosomes can be divided into two groups, the autosomes and the sex chromosomes. Uh, as humans, we have 22 pairs, or 44, uh, autosomes. And these autosomes just code for other structures in the body. They have nothing to do with gender, whereas the sex chromosomes uh, have information on there that helps to code for gender, whether you're male or female. So a male will typically have XY, a female will have XX. But there's variations on that as well. And we'll talk about some genetic disorders on the chapter on genetics. Okay, so we've talked about what was going on during interphase. We had G1, where we had some growth, some replication of organelles. We had our S phase, where we had synthesis of the new DNA molecules. And then we had G2, which is more growth in preparation for uh, cell division and mitosis. So now we're at the process of mitosis. And mitosis has a few different phases we're going to talk about. And mitosis is technically just division of the nucleus. Uh, whereas cytokinesis is division of the cytoplasm and the cellular components. But realize they're essentially going on at the same time, so a lot of biology teachers will just talk about them as being the same process. And there is a cell. I'm not sure why this is here. Okay, the stages of mitosis are prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. I memorize this using the acronym IPMAT. So I would go before this, and I would stand for interphase, which is the phase before uh, mitosis. So I-P-M-A-T, IPMAT. It means nothing, but it's easy to remember. And that way, you can keep the cycles uh, in the correct order. OK, let's look at what a cell would look like in interphase. Chances are you've used a microscope before in your biology class. You've looked under the microscope, probably looked at your own cheek cells. And when you look at it, it's just a circle. It looks like this. And there's another circle inside, which is our nucleus. Now, the fact is we can't see any chromosomes inside this nucleus, and that indicates we must be in interphase. Because during interphase, those chromosomes have been unwound, and that DNA is sort of floating around the nucleus as chromatin. And that's why we can't see those X-like structures. The other thing you can see is that we have a very intact nuclear membrane. It's not broken down at all. And that we have these centrioles over here, which my arm won't point to. Uh, the centrioles are important for the process of mitosis. They help to connect to the chromosomes once the cell membrane breaks down, or the nuclear membrane. And they will then pull those chromosomes apart. So they will be important in the process of mitosis. OK, so the next phase here is prophase, right? Interphase, prophase. Prophase is the first stage of mitosis. And it's divided into early prophase and late prophase. During this phase, the chromatin, which was unwound, once again winds itself back around those proteins called histones so that we end up with visible chromosomes uh, during prophase. Uh, the other thing that happens is the centrioles, which were initially located in just one part of the cell, begin to migrate to the opposite poles of the cell. So this is what a cell might look like in early prophase. First of all, I look at the nucleus. I can tell that I must be in mitosis because I can see chromosomes. We don't see chromosomes in interphase. I can further tell that I must be in uh, early prophase because I can still see a nuclear membrane. So because I can see chromosomes and a nuclear membrane, it's got to be prophase. Here we can see our centrioles, which are starting to divide apart. And again, these are spreading these microtubules in between them. OK, late prophase, what's happening? Well, the only difference here is that the nuclear membrane begins to break down and disintegrate. The other thing that's happening is the microtubules, which were starting to come from opposite sides of the centrioles, are beginning to grab a hold of the chromosomes now that the nuclear membrane is gone. And this is what it looks like. So again, we have our nucleus here, but it's fragmented. It's got holes in it, and the membrane's breaking down. And here's each centriole, and, uh, and uh, originating from the centrioles are these microtubules. And the microtubules are grabbing a hold of the individual chromosomes and sort of pulling them uh, and sorting them out and sorting them together. So we're going to see what happens in the next phase. Basically, we're going to end up with all the chromosomes in a line. 
and that phase is called metaphase. Metaphase is probably my favorite phase of mitosis because it's the easiest one to spot. It's pretty cool and it's a very long phase, so it, chances are it's one of the easiest phases to identify under the microscope. So during metaphase, the chromosomes uh, are all lined up in the middle of the cell on a structure called the metaphase plate. The nuclear membrane is completely gone and the mitotic spindle is now complete. So this is what metaphase would look like under the microscope. What you can see here is we have all the chromosomes lined up in a single conga line, just sort of like grabbing hold of each other. And then they're sitting on a structure called the metaphase plate at the theoretical metal part of the cell. And then we have our microtubules, which are originating from our centrioles, which are grabbing a hold of those chromosomes and arranging them in that line. Now remember that each one of these chromosomes has two halves, which are called sister chromatids. And remember that sister chromatids are that's right, genetically identical. This shows a closer up version of the uh, chromosomes along with the centrioles and the microtubules. Again, we have our chromosome, which has the two identical halves, the sister chromatids, and they're being pulled upon by these kinetochore uh, microtubules. And those microtubules are coming from our centrioles. Again, just another closer up view. Here we have one chromosome, sister chromatid, sister chromatid, genetically identical to one another. And this is important because when these two halves divide during the next stage, and this half goes this way, and that half goes that way, um, the important thing is that they're carrying the exact same genetic information. So the cell that is up here and the cell that is down there will get the same information and will be able to continue on as new cells. Okay, the next stage here is anaphase. Remember, ip mat. So interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase. Anaphase is a period where the sister chromatids will separate from one another after the centromeres divide. The kinetochore microtubules, the ones actually hanging onto the chromosomes, will then pull those sister chromatids to the opposite sides of the cells. We have another type of microtubule which is not connected to the chromosomes, but is actually pushing past each other to elongate the cell in order to achieve uh, the cytokinesis. Okay, this is what the cell might look like during anaphase. It's a very easy phase to spot, but it's a very short phase, so you actually have to catch it pretty quickly. So what we have here is we have a cell, and you can see now that we have our sister chromatids. There's no nuclear membrane, so we must not be in prophase. But here we can see the sister chromatids have actually separated from one another. At this point, because they are genetically identical, it's okay to call them individual chromosomes. That's okay. And so we can see our centromere right here, our centriole, excuse me. And these are the kinetochore microtubules that are pulling our sister chromatids to opposite sides of the cells. There's also other microtubules which are pushing the cells apart and elongating it in preparation for cytokinesis. Okay, our last stage of mitosis is telophase. Uh, telophase is the point where the chromosomes have reached the opposite poles of the cell, and then we begin to reform a nuclear membrane, and the actual chromosomes will then begin to unwind again back into chromatin, because essentially we're done with mitosis. Now, at the same time, it's important to point out that cytokinesis will be happening, so we're going to talk about that as well. Okay, this is what a cell might look like at the end of telophase. What we have here is you can see we have one nucleus here that's reforming, one nucleus here that's reforming. Still can see the chromosomes, but they're going to start to unwind in, uh, very shortly. And then we can also see that the microtubule centers and the centrioles begin to disassemble one another. Okay, last but not least, we need to talk about cytokinesis. We act like cytokinesis is different. Uh, it's technically just division of the cytoplasm, not of the nucleus, but it's happening at the same time as telophase. So essentially, telophase and cytokinesis are simultaneously occurring. So cytokinesis, again, separation of the cytoplasm into two cells, and it's caused by microfilament contraction in an area called the cleavage furrow. So this is what cytokinesis looks like in a cell. So initially, we started up here on this side, and you can see that kind of uh, invagination right there with the cells pinching inward. And that's because we have these circular-oriented microtubules which begin to pinch that cell into, uh, into two cells. And eventually we end up right here. We have two uh, genetically identical daughter cells. We can't see the chromosomes anymore because those chromosomes have unwound, and we're back in interphase again.